Hello everybody, so today we're going to do a slightly different video. It's not a request video as such, but a few months ago I was asked a question by a viewer um, about our layout of our care housing, um, the, the milk and parlour and the cubicles and feeding and everything. So I think what I'll do is I'll, if I read the question out, um, then we'll know what we're aiming at um, and why I've decided to, to do this video rather than write it down. So if I read it out, it's from a guy called Ed Westgate. So Ed, if you're watching this, if you can leave us a comment down below just to let us know you have read it and then we know we're all right. Um, he said, um, I see that your basic building layout for your cow housing and your American parlor is that everything is parallel. So I would like to know if, if it works well in terms of cow flow, etc. And if there is anything you would change regarding the layout of the building. I would also like to know what you think of a drive through central feed passage, which is what we've got. Um, versus perimeter feeding in terms of feed wastage and ventilation. So what I said at the time, I think that's a bit too much to write down. You know, it's, it's quite complicated. There's a lot to go into. I think what we'll do is we'll do a proper video where we walk around, we look at different stuff, and we can point out where we are as to what I would do differently, if anything, and why we did stuff the way we did, most importantly. So as you can see, we were stood at the back, stood at the back of the collecting yard parlour at the far end, it, the collecting yard is exactly the same width as the parlour so there is no funnel in, it's just a straight straight run. So what you didn't see just a minute ago, this is the gate of the collecting yard and the cows come through from here. So we'll start kind of at, at the back of the system. So the cows come through from the cubicles in there, they come through here into the collecting yard where they will come up towards the milk and parlour. There's no backing gate. It's just simple, just an empty yard into the milk and parlour. You will see uh, today is it's raining, so it's liner change day today. So I'm changing the liner today because it's raining and it's due. There is a video I did. Um, so I did a video late last year about changing the liners. I'll put a little thingy up here. You can go and have a look at that, a uh, link to it. So this is the milk and parlor. It's 1428 swing over GEA Westphalia parlor. Um, I'm not gonna cover the parlor in depth today. There is a milking video coming up. It's one of the most requested videos I've had would, is would I do a milking video? So that will be coming up and I will cover why we did what we did in the parlor then rather than now so we'll just quickly whiz through the parlour so the cows milk once they finish they come into this dispersal area now this is I'm not sure if the camera's showing the size of it but it is it is wide here so it's 15 feet wide dispersal area so there's no <clears throat> there's no crowding the cows can come out they can spread um, and there's there's no bunching up as they're coming out so it's the same for both sides and then we have this little dispersal area where they can stand up. During the housing period, I milk the cows and, and dad scrapes out and feeds in the, uh, in the morning. And while he's scraping out, I can bunch enough cows here in the dispersal area to get everything done. So he's got time, I'm not, I'm not short of space. So once, <coughs> so once we've got some room down the end, the cows file down through this passageway. Here is a shedding gate. So all the cows wear an electronic tag in their ear, <coughs> which we will cover in depth in the milking video. And that tag will read this, and this aerial here will read that tag and trigger, should we need to pick her out, that will trigger this gate, run by compressed air to pick her out into a holding pen. So we put them into the pen for, for example, for AI, uh, when the vets come in or, or any treatment they need where they need to be separated, they, they get picked out. So they come down this raceway every day, twice a day, and nothing's strange. So if, if it gets shedded out, they just come out into this, into this yard. And uh, it's not like we're trying to push them somewhere they don't want to go. Or... So it's not pushing them somewhere different, they're used to it. And, uh, and, and they do it every day. So past that shedding gate, we come into the foot baths, the two foot bath system. I did, I think it was early this year, 
I did a full video on preparing the foot baths, putting the chemical in and running the cows through. So again, I will put a link up here to go and see that if you haven't seen it. And then once we get exit the foot bath area, we come down here and we have a bank of six outer parlor feeders. During, during the summer, they don't, we don't use these feeders at all, but during the housing period, the cows have 24 hour access to this area and to the feeders. And again, those feeders are run by the electronic ear tags, the same, same tags that run the parlor and the gate. So the cow will enter <clears throat> these plastic bits on the side is what carry the aerials that read the tags. That picks up what cow it is sends a signal back to the control box and that will then keep stored in the hopper it will then feed down into the bowl but they're empty at the minute we're not using them right so now we're back that's where we started us collecting yard in there so we've done a complete loop of the, of the cow flow there so the benefit of a loop system is the cows are always turning they always go the same way so they're not, there's no tight turns, you saw the dispersal, dispersal yard at the far end, because it's so wide, they've got room to go out and turn <clears throat> in their own time. You don't want cows turning tightly on concrete. Uh, we don't want a cow's foot to spin while it's stationary. You need the cows to walk nice and gently, otherwise you get damage to the, to the hooves. But the cows come through, they enter into the cubicles, basic layout of the cubicles is virtually symmetrical both sides so we've got a cubicle passage and we have got the feed passage and then exactly the same over the far side so on the end of every run of cubicles there is a water tank that tips over so we can just tip the whole lot of water out to keep it clean So it's easy to keep clean fresh water in front of the cows because that is one of the most important things. Cows need a lot of water and it needs to be clean otherwise if it's dirty smelly they won't touch it. So keep it clean, plenty of intake. So if you can see this building is a three span. So there's a span for cubicles, a span for the feed passage and the same again for cubicles over there. And the ridge in the centre of each building is open. You can see today it is dripping a little bit of rain through. <clears throat> the reason we went for three spans rather than one enormous single span shed, um, it reduces the height, which helped us to get planning permission for this by not having a massive, massive shed, it's much lower. <clears throat> My opinion, it's better to have three open ridges across the width of the building than just one in the middle. And also having that three three spans allowed us there's an air gap here between the between the roofs so this central shed is taller than the two outside ones giving us more air gap for more fresh air in so, so we've just walked through here this is a crossover passage between the rows of cubicles so cows don't never have to walk there's 14 cubicles in this run, and the same again outside. So cows never have to walk more than 14 cubicle lengths to either get water from center to the end or to get to food. So they never have to walk very far to, uh, to come in. So this is another, another question I'd asked. What was my opinion on central feed barriers versus perimeter? So as you can see, and you probably, and you may well have seen in a previous feeding videos, we've got the central one. So the features of this, this passage for us, this where we're stood now, the feeding passage, is six inches higher than where the cows stand. Okay, so they, so they don't have to reach down to the level they're stood on to feed, it's, it's raised up. 
we've got walls with a rounded top so that it's nothing sharp for their necks to rub on and this rail is set forward four inches and that again helps to reduce pressure on their neck for when they're feeding. So I mentioned earlier on we've got the three the three vents in the roof and you can see today has rained quite a lot we've had a lot of rain this week and the floor of the feed passage is dry so we don't get much rain coming through on the cubicles passage it doesn't matter because it's a straight passage anyway but for this one we need an enormous amount of rain to make this floor wet so having the i think the having this open ridge far outweighs the disadvantage of a little bit of rain occasionally coming in i think it's far better to have that airflow able to escape and uh, not getting in and not letting and the water coming in is not a problem so why do we go for the central one rather than perimeter because as you can see it takes up a lot more space you need enough room to drive a tractor and mix a wagon up the center whereas if you were feeding around the edge you wouldn't need that you would get more space under cover the reason we the reason we went central rather than outside we couldn't feed down that edge because that's obviously the parlor so you know that's that's not open for driving down to, to, to pay out feed that side would be but that's out in the field so we're going to lose a bit of field by doing that one of the major reasons we did it we did it was for biosecurity um, not so much in this area but down somerset on the somerset levels i know starlings are an enormous problem and we haven't done it but it could easily block net all the holes and all these ridges to keep any birds out if we need to do it we can do it one day we don't need to at the moment so that's why it's not been done but it, it can be done because birds are a big problem in some areas the second problem is keeping off uh, ground based wildlife <clears throat> we can sheet the gates to keep everything out and this is totally separate whereas if you were feeding outside that's not practical so that's why we do that I would imagine, going back to the original question, wastage outside versus wastage inside, there's probably nothing in it because you would have an overhang on the roof to, uh, to keep it dry anyway. So I guess there's nothing in it. That's the reason we went this way, just to keep it contained, should we ever need to, for netting birds and, and whatever else out. With, with, an, uh, with an outside barrier, I suppose you could do it, but it wouldn't be as simple as, do, as doing it in here. So another little feature we've got down the end is the cow brush. Uh, that's a De La Vile rotary brush. We've had that, it'll be two years in February, I think. So they kind of had 18 months now. Uh, it took a long time for the cows to get used to it. More than we thought. Some of them, some of them, even now, some are a little bit afraid of it, but most of them, they don't leave it alone. So it's, they are expensive. They're a lot of money to buy, but I think it's a worthwhile investment. It keeps the cows much cleaner. They get scratch their back it's all, it just helps their natural grooming behavior so we bought one and we've never regretted it although it was quite a bit of money so we'll just go back through to the cubicles because something i should have said earlier on and i didn't so the cubicle from the heel to the wall is nine foot so we've got nine foot bed so there's plenty of room ahead of the cows they're not lunging what they call lunging room at the front you need plenty of space for that they're bedded on we've got sawdust on the beds um, but underneath that sawdust is a mattress so they're a soft ish to lie on and we've got a brisket board up there that prevents the cows going too far and getting stuck so the final part of the question i guess was would we change anything i don't think i would we built this we built this building in 2009 so this cup coming winter will be kind of its 11th year of, of use um, these mattresses all went everything went in together it was all new these mattresses have all done 10 years and there's no sign of wear yet these po these they are wilson agriculture cubicles we installed all this ourselves all post mounted um, with concrete along the front they're all still they're all still looking good 
there's, there's no, nothing's got bent or, or out of line or anything so they were a, a sound investment I did show the tanks earlier on they actually came from Wilson's as well um, but a little bit disappointed in those they are rusting through which is which is a surprise because they're really thick heavy duty um, made of you know thick, thick steel but they've got holes rusted through them so that's kind of a bit of an issue really um, and what would we change I don't think we change anything we spent a long time planning this one thing we did change during the man during the building when we got to ordering the cubicles the guy from Wilson's come in <clears throat> we were the, the previous cubicles were four foot wide so four foot between here and we were going to do the same again but the guy from Wilson's come in and he said length of a cubicle so length of the cubicle is far more important than width so we actually narrowed these these are three foot nine which is kind of a standard measurement um, with a nine foot bed and we've never had an issue it's been we've never had a cow stuck in here so narrowing them up got more in the shed you know it made more use of space without any effect on cow welfare or anything so we followed his advice there so that was a change we made before we started almost so I don't think there's anything we change now because a lot of thought went into it and we actually apart from standing the shed up and roofing it farm labour with some help from a friend of mine after he'd finished work we did everything we put the concrete in the cubicles in we built the walls we put all the posts all the posts and the rails for the feed passage we put that in um, one thing we didn't do we didn't wire it we got a guy in to do the electrics but other than that we put the mattresses down we put the cubicle divisions in we did everything ourselves it took a while but we did it it's all our own work and it saved an enormous amount of money on labor so that's why we did it ourselves um, and it works well we've got access to field that way and the same again the far end um, so passageways are all tractor scraped so tractor scrape out to channel that runs the width for the building pump there up into the tower <clears throat> we are set up when we did it we did lay out four automatic scrapers if we ever want to um, and we've got the channel got the slats in the channel we haven't done it yet whether we will or not don't know but it's there should we need to in the future right so there you go Ed hopefully that's covered everything for you um, I think this is going to turn into a bit of a longer video than I was expecting but hopefully it's covered everything you want any questions or any comments you've got stick them in the thing down below um, I will put if you want to go back and watch the links for the two videos I mentioned earlier um, I might put them somewhere you know and uh, if you haven't done so please subscribe to the channel and uh, give us a thumbs up to let us know you've watched it and you've enjoyed it um, and I'll say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time